Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Glenn Ford and Janet Blair in Gallant Journey. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. About a hundred miles from here is a new and shining monument to a strangely overlooked event, man's first controlled flight in an airplane. A momentous and dramatic incident which Columbia Pictures have helped immortalize in their current screen hit, Gallant Journey. Our stars tonight, Glenn Ford and Janet Blair, appear in their original screen roles. Glenn being Canadian-born, we are especially glad to have him with us to help us extend greetings to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation on its 10th anniversary. Gallant Journey is more than the story of a great invention. It's also the story of a great love a man and woman who together storm the skies and give humanity its wings. Speaking of wings, I have a letter from Miss Betty Fleming, a stewardess on Pan American World Airways, largest airline in the world. She writes, I fly by clipper from San Francisco and Los Angeles to Honolulu and New Zealand, and we pass through almost every kind of climate, from tropical heat to freezing cold. Of course, that's hard on anyone's complexion. But I found Lux Toilet Soap is a wonderful help in keeping my skin soft and smooth. It travels with me every flight I make. Well, knowing the standard of attractiveness among airline stewardesses, we're doubly grateful to Miss Fleming, and we wish her many gallant journeys with Lux Toilet Soap. On to the first act of tonight's play, starring Glenn Ford as John Montgomery and Janet Blair as Regina. The year is 1883. A lot of things happened that year. The Brooklyn Bridge was opened. Richard Wagner died. Germany, Austria, and Italy signed the Triple Alliance. And the Russians crowned a new czar. You'll find all that in the history books, but something else was happening that most history books overlook. On a small ranch near San Diego, a young man named John Montgomery was building a flying machine. John, John, it's gone, your pet eagle. John, where are you? In the barn, Pa. Did you hear me, John? Your your eagle. Yeah, it's gone all right. I let him go. You let him go? Yeah. Hey, don't look so happy. You mean you're giving up your flying machine? I knew one of these days you'd come to your senses, son. I haven't given up the flying machine. You haven't? Oh. Pa, I've been studying about birds and how they fly for about ten years now, haven't I? I guess the one who taught me most was was that eagle. I figured he deserved his freedom, so I let him go. My glider's almost done, Pa. Look, I'll explain it to you. Johnny, have you fixed the cultivator yet? Have... Uh, I'm sorry, I... I'll get on it right away. Well, I wish you would. I've got to take your sisters into town. If Regina's boat gets in on time... Oh, gosh, I forgot all about her coming down for a visit. Seems to me you're forgetting everything except that doggone flying machine. I'm sorry, Pa, but I just got to finish it. I've got to... Hey, we're back, Ma. Ma, we're back. Guess what, Ma? Regina can stay a whole month. My goodness, isn't that fine? Be just like the old days when we lived next door. Well, Regina, why, you're well, you're almost all grown up. Yes, sir, that's just what I've been telling her. <laughs> well, I certainly feel grown up, traveling all the way from San Francisco by myself. <laughs> she got seasick, Ma. Oh, you. Well, you see, it was a, a very small boat, but I feel fine now. I tell you, a thriving town like San Diego has got to have a railroad. Maybe you can do something about it, Zachary, when you get your appointment in Washington. Washington? We'll tell you all about it, Regina, but not now. If we can just nominate Grover Cleveland. Oh, uh, uh, where's John? In the barn, dear. Where else? John! Oh, John! Yes, Pa? I'll do it right now, Pa. 
Johnny! Is that you, Regina? How are you? Oh, I'm just fine. I'll be there in a minute. I heard that before, too. All he ever thinks about is that flying machine. Oh, I just can't wait to see it. Oh, now, don't you encourage him. All our neighbors are talking about him. They think he's a little touched. Now, that'll be enough, Margaret. Well, they do, Mother. They don't even say a little anymore. They say it's complete. All right, all right. Now, just clear out of my kitchen, all of you. Supper at 7 o'clock, Regina. And then I glue the rib to the wing like this, you see? I tie it with these thongs here. Who helps you when I'm not here, Johnny? Your brother? No, when he's not too busy working the ranch. Now, Jim will be back from Los Angeles tomorrow. I had to sell some steers for Dad. All right, you can stop working the bellows, Regina. I need your finger over here. My finger? Mm-hmm, yeah. Come here. Hold this, will you? That stick? That stick happens to be a rib. Oh. Steady now. Now, bring your finger down here. That's it. Hey, little girls like you shouldn't be nervous. Oh, I'm not nervous. I, I'm just excited. Helping to build a flying machine. You're excited, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I kind of feel that way myself sometimes when I think of flying this. Johnny, you're not working too hard, are you? You look kind of tired. Well, don't look at my face. Look at what you're doing. There. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Say, it's just going to be like a big bird, isn't it? Uh-huh. Exactly the same parabolic curve. Hey, did you ever see a bird with a flat wing? I... I don't think so, Johnny. Yeah, well, nobody else ever did either. That's why nobody's ever been able to fly. They didn't figure out why their wings were curved, you see? All right, you can let go now. I said you can let go. Oh, fine. That's oh, fine. Oh, I, I, my finger's tied to the rib. Well, why didn't you take it out? Well, I'm sorry. Now we'll have to do it all over again. Where's the scissors? Here. Ah, uh, you know, sometimes I think you're just a cuckoo, Jenny. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Uh, you're saying you're a cuckoo? Oh, no. The smiling. You know something, Regina? You know, I keep thinking of you as the, well, the little kid next door. And then when I, I look at you, I... I... You, you what, Johnny? Uh, what? Uh, oh... Oh, nothing. Where's the scissors? You awake, Mother? Uh-huh. Has Johnny gone to bed? Yes, finally. Regina was out there helping him. He doesn't know it, but Johnny's got that girl bewitched. She thinks he's wonderful. Well, he is. If I could only get his mind off of flying. It wouldn't matter if I weren't in politics. Anybody that tries anything new is always called crazy, but thinking you can fly. If my opponents ever get hold of that, it might even get back to Mr. Cleveland. Be hard to explain that, Ellen. Even to a progressive Democrat. I think I'll have another talk with John in the morning. Whatever you say, dear. Oh, very dangerous politically. Very dangerous. <laughs> At the rate we're working now, Johnny, why, it'll be ready to fly this week. No, it'll be ready to fi fly tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, Regina. You're sewing that muslin on the wings much better than I could do it. So you'll be ready to fly tomorrow, son. What? Oh, morning, Pa. Hello, Mr. Montgomery. Well, I uh, guess I better leave this and fix that cultivator. No, <laughs> no hurry. Mm, it's getting to be quite a machine, isn't it? That's about finished. So you remember last month when you said spruce would be better than hickory on the wings? Ah, you certainly were right. Did I suggest that? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope nobody finds that out. Uh, John, your mother and I had a talk last night, and, well, we decided that maybe... Oh, why worry about crossing a bridge until you get to it? I don't know what you mean, Paul. Johnny, when you were ten years younger, it didn't seem to matter. Boys get all sorts of wild ideas, but you're not a boy anymore, and I hate to see you wasting time. I walked in the barn just now, hoping to convince you of that, but I... No, I can't. Do what you want, Johnny. I won't interfere. Thanks, Pa. Well, I'll go see about that cultivator. You see, Johnny? He is on your side. He is. Yeah. Well, Regina, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for helping me. Oh, save that until we're finished. We are finished. Johnny, you're not going to fly it? No, not for a while. But you can't do if that. If Pa can give in to me, I guess I can give in to him, too. He's... Well, he's, he's worried about me. For all I know, he may be right. There's no proof I can fly this. 
Well, my mother used to tell me something, Johnny. She said when people said I was wrong and, and I knew I was right, to go ahead and show them I was. Well, that's all right for a kid, Regina, but I got a future to think about. It's not for myself. It's for... It's for... For, for who, Johnny? Ooh, for, for them, my mother and father. And... Oh. But if I could only fly it once, just once... There's nothing to stop you? Oh, Pa's afraid that if people saw me, if they see it fail, if it won't fly, that... That they'd never stop laughing at the Montgomerys? Yeah, that, that's right. But would they have to see you, Johnny? You could take it out early in the morning, as soon as it got light. No one would know anything about it. No, I'd need help. Oh, couldn't no, I? No, no, certainly not. Besides, besides, Jimmy will be home this afternoon. He'd, he'd help me. Mm, that's what brothers are for, aren't they? Well, where will you try it out, Johnny? Ote Mesa. It's not very far from here. And, and we... Now, Regina, not a word about this, do you hear? Not to anyone. Do you think I'm a child or something? I give you the idea, and then you don't even trust me. Of course I trust you, but... No, never mind. I... Do whatever you want, Johnny. Break your neck if you want to. At least I won't be there to see you do it. Oh, Regina. Hey, come back here, Regina. Oh. <laughs> the idea, Jim. We'll get up before dawn tomorrow morning, put the flying machine on the hay wagon, and cover it up with hay, then. That's just in case anyone sees us. They'll think that we're moving a load of hay. Yeah, right. And we'll drive out to Ote Mesa as soon as it's light. We'll pull her off the hill and... Well, we'll see what happens, huh? Johnny, you're, you're sure it's safe? You're sure it'll fly? I'm not sure of anything. But you'll have an answer to that question tomorrow morning. Now, not a word to a soul. <laughs> We got her off the wagon, all right. Nothing broken, is it, Johnny? The wings? Not a scratch. All right, let's hurry while the wind's right. Just a minute now while I get into the seat here. You okay? Oh, okay. Now, get hold of the rope and run down that hill as fast as you can. Hey, if you do fly, where will you come down? Oh, don't worry. I'll land in one of the fields. You ready? In a minute. Now, don't hang on to that rope too long. Remember, this, this uh, aeroplane can't lift both of us. Aeroplane? Oh, when did you invent that word? When I... Uh, right... Right now, I guess, it's, uh, gotta have some kind of name. Well, here we go. Right. Johnny, you did it. You did it, Johnny, you flew. Oh, I should have gone higher. I should have gone further. How high do you think I was, Jim? Oh, 20 feet off the ground, at least, maybe 30. You flew, Johnny. And nobody else ever did that. Oh, I gotta go higher, much higher. Look up there, Jim, up there where the sun's just hitting those clouds. That's where I'll fly someday, away, way up there. Come on now, I'm gonna try it again. Well, in case anyone's interested, I fed the horses tonight, and the cows, and the chickens. And the ducks. Hmm. Well, Mother, our boys seem unusually silent tonight. Not eating, either. Looks as if they're tired of your cooking. Oh, it's their favorite supper, too. Well, can a fellow just not be hungry or tired or something? Since when have I seen you two boys too tired to eat like a horse? <laughs> well, let's have it. Where were you all day? I said, where were you? Johnny flew today. He flew. Johnny what today? He, he, he flew. I saw him. He flew just like a bird. You saw him? What do you mean, you saw me? Oh, I, I went there, Johnny. I, I followed you and Jim. I hid beneath the rocks. Oh, I, I had to be there, Johnny. Why? Well, because I... Is that all you have to say, Johnny? Yes, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry anyone said anything. But I had to. I just couldn't stand people calling you crazy. And now what are you going to do with it? Your flying machine. Well, I don't know exactly, except maybe make it go higher. Why? Why, to get up there in the clouds, see what they're really like. Johnny, when in thunder are you going to think about your future? I've found my future, and it's up there. Then you'd better look for a job, son. This ranch has got to be worked by people interested in ranching. Well, of course it does, Dad. Excuse me, please. Johnny! <laughs> December 6, 1883. It's four months now since I settled down to ranching. I haven't given up flying, but it's got to play second fiddle for a while. Someday, maybe, someday. July 9th, 1884. Grover Cleveland was nominated yesterday for the presidency. 
And if he's elected, Dad's sure to become assistant attorney general, providing my flying machine keeps out of the newspapers. November 23rd. Dad got his appointment today, and the family moves to Washington next week. All except me. I'm staying here to take care of the ranch. I, I got a bit of news myself today. My old friend, Dickie Ball, is now Father Ball. He's teaching at Santa Clara College. One of these days, I've got to go up and see him. Johnny! Johnny Montgomery! Oh, it's good to see you again. How are you, Dickie? You look just like your old self, Johnny. So do you, Dickie. <laughs> all of you. Now, don't be starting <laughs> that the minute you get here. We can't all be beanpoles. So you finally decided to quit ranching and take a vacation. Vacation? Oh, I'm looking for a job. Well, we've got one for you here at Santa Clara. You, you what? Well, I've been speaking about you to Father Kenton. You remember him? Well, sure. He, he used to teach at St. Ignatius when we were kids. Oh, that's a long time ago, Dickie. He's vice president of the college, Johnny. Uh, let's drop in on him now. Well, what's your rush? I just got here. Never mind. He wants to see you. Come along now. And the job is yours if you want it, Johnny. It'll be like the old days having you back with us. I, I, I just don't know what to say, Father Kenton. Why would you go to the trouble of inventing a job for me? <laughs> <laughs> Some job it is. Uh, besides helping teach the boys... All you do for $20 a month and board is just write Santa Clara up there in the skies with indelible ink. You want me to work on my flying machine here? Before we answer that, Johnny, we have a surprise for you. Well, how many surprises do you keep up those sleeves of yours? Come on in, Regina. Jimmy. Hello, Johnny. Regina, you... Oh, you've grown up so I'd, I'd hardly know you. Well, isn't that what all little girls do, Johnny? Grow up? Say, you have to. Yes, but not so pretty. Oh. Now I'm beginning to understand, Father Kenton. Regina lives near here. She told you about me, about my flight to San Diego, huh? Oh, Regina, you know I should have spanked you good for sneaking out and watching my first flight at Oche Mesa. <laughs> I'll remind you to someday. Well, for heaven's sake, let's get out of here before he changes his mind and does it now. Feminine screams in here would be very hard to explain. Come along, Regina. I want to show Johnny our machine shop. This is it, Johnny. Just a shed and a monkey wrench or two, but plenty of room to build a... An airplane. Airplane. Thank you, young lady. We'll get the things you need, Johnny. Tools and the like. We'll find a way. You'll... You'll take the job, Johnny. And just what would my job be on this team, Father Ken? A man-sized job, Johnny. To show people how to fly. I'll take it, Father. And thank you. In a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of Gallant Journey, starring Glenn Ford and Janet Blair. When Columbia Pictures was filming their now famous The Jolson Story, starring Larry Parks and Evelyn Keyes, one of the most fascinated spectators on the lot was our young guest of the evening, Miss Janice Carter, herself a Columbia player. Tell us, Janice, what was the particular attraction? From an acting point of view, Mr. Keeley, it was the uncanny way that Larry Parks imitated Al Jolson's mannerisms and personality. From a musical standpoint, I just loved hearing all the famous Jolson tunes. Naturally, since you're a singer yourself. Haven't you a college degree in music? Yes, Mr. Keeley, from Western Reserve University. I always expected that music would be my career. I never thought while I was singing in college operettas, in church choirs, or even in Broadway musicals, that someday I'd be here in Hollywood in pictures. Just as anxious to make good as a dramatic actress. Well, you've nothing to worry about. Being starred with Glenn Ford in your next Columbia picture. Yes, it was a great break for me, working with Glenn in Framed. You're being very modest. Actually, your starring role is a reward for a lot of talent and hard work. Don't you agree, John Kennedy? I certainly do, but if our listeners could see Miss Carter, they'd say those blonde good looks of hers played a leading role, too. Very, very photogenic they are. Especially that lovely Lux complexion. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Even when I was posing for magazine covers back in New York, Lux Toilet Soap was my regular complexion care. It still is. I find it's just the right care for my skin. You'll find lovely Hollywood stars agreeing with you that Lux Toilet Soap is a complexion care to depend on. Continued success to you, Miss Janice Cart, and thank you for coming here tonight. 
If any of the ladies in our audience haven't used the Lux Soap Complexion Care that really makes skin lovelier, why not try the Active Lather Facials Screen Stars recommend? They're simple, easy, and they work. Here's all you do. Smooth the creamy Lux Soap Lather well in. Rinse with warm water, then cold. Pat dry with a soft towel. Leave skin feeling so soft and smooth, looking so fresh. Recent tests by skin specialists showed actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time with these Lux Soap Beauty Facials. No wonder the most beautiful women in the world, Hollywood's famous screen stars, depend on this gentle daily care. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act Two of Gallant Journey, starring Glenn Ford as John Montgomery and Janet Blair as Regina. For two years now, John Montgomery has lived and taught at Santa Clara College and worked on his airplanes. Now in the little college workshop, he puts the finishing touches on a model plane an experimental miniature. Two interested observers are a student, Tom Logan, and Johnny's old friend, Father Ball. Well, the center of gravity seems all right. Same wing curve, isn't it, sir, as the one you flew in San Diego? That's right, Tommy, except this the second wing here. That ought to make it more stable, more maneuverable. Hey, Johnny, what's this contraption over here? Don't tell me this thing flies. Oh, that, that, uh, that's another great invention. Yours? Mm, sure. That's, uh, it's a separator. Washes gold out of sand. Washes what out of what? Washes gold out of, oh, just a minute here, I'll show you. Here's a bucket of sand. I put it into the hopper, turn on the water here, and revolve the crank. You see? Uh-huh. Now the water and the sand pour out of the spout, and the gold remains in the hopper. Not if there were any gold to begin with. <laughs> Gold remains in the hopper. Uh huh. Be a great machine for a mining company, wouldn't it? Better stick to airplanes, Johnny. That I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, let's have it, Tommy. I got to get this pink silk on the wings here. Pink silk, indeed. <laughs> very, very fancy, Johnny. You'll be ready to fly it soon, won't you, sir? Oh, this weekend. There's a high windmill on my dad's ranch. Be a swell spot to launch it from. An elegant spot. Besides, Johnny, it'd do you good to get away for a weekend. Well, Tom, if you're sure your dad won't mind. Uh... Father Ball's coming out anyway. So is and... Regina. Regina? Oh, she's known my folks for years. Uh, she's sort of interested in your airplanes, too, remember? Well, I... No, 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 no excuses. I, I was about to say it's a great idea. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. We'll launch the Pink Lady on Saturday. Oh, Johnny, look at her. She flies beautifully. Watch where she lands, Tommy. I see her. Hurry up, Tommy. Bring her back here. Now, calm down, Regina. We got all afternoon. Oh, I'm too excited to calm down. <laughs> you kind of got flying in your blood, haven't you? I should say I have. Oh, if only I could build a large plane that would fly like the pink lady. We will, Johnny. If that's all that's bothering you, you can stop worrying right now. Oh, I can, can I? Yes, you can. <laughs> You'll build a plane that'll fly even better than the pink lady. Hey, Tommy, get a wiggle on. Thanks for the glue. Now, Mr. Logan, if you'll just hold this, I'll get the wing fixed in no time. Pink Lady kind of got herself scratched up a bit this afternoon, huh? Johnny, do you have to work all night, too? The longer he works, the longer I get to dance with you. Oh, now, Ma, don't stop playing the piano. I won't be much longer. Uh, tell me something, Johnny. What good will it do people to fly? Well, save time, get places faster. Faster? What'll they do with the time they save? Well, go more places, meet uh, new people. Go more places, meet new people. Oh, well, sure. Johnny, why wouldn't you dance with me? Well, uh, if uh, <clears throat> if you want the truth, Regina, I I don't know how. <laughs> well, you'll never learn if you don't try. He's uh, saving time for folks, Regina. Oh, but it's easy, Johnny. It's well, it's it's a lot like flying. Now watch my feet. Mm-hmm. See, see what I mean? 
That's the first thing I've heard about flying that makes sense. Oh, come on, please. Well, I could be through with this in just a minute if I only had a little piece of silk to go Well, if, if I get you the silk, will you dance with me? Oh, sure, I, if you can stand it. All right, all right. Turn around, everybody. Hmm? Turn oh, around. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Here, Johnny. Now, if I can ruin a perfectly good petticoat... Say, it's pink, too. <laughs> you need a silk, Regina. Huh? Oh, go on and dance with her. Huh? Who knows, maybe someday I'll want to tell my grandchildren I worked on one of your first airplanes. Oh, now, uh, go on, dance. Uh, a bit of music, Professor. <clears throat> now, not too fast, Mrs. Logan. All right. How is this? Yeah. Here we go, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoop. <laughs> I'm sorry, Regina. <laughs> I got... Well, for one thing, Johnny, you've got to hold me tighter. Don't tell him, Regina. Let him guess. <laughs> now, follow me, Johnny. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, that's fine, Johnny. <laughs> one, two, three. Keep time, too, Johnny. Yeah, right. one, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, doing any better? Almost huh? perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep on thinking that you're flying. Yeah. Huh? One, two, hey, one, you know two, something? Three. Think I'm going to kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> Step it up a little, Mrs. Logan. Johnny? Oh, Johnny, not so tight. <laughs> Johnny! Johnny! Well, Johnny, how's the new flying machine coming along? Well, after a month, Dickie, I think we're really finally getting somewhere. It's just like the pink lady, isn't it? But all grown up. Uh, say, how big is this model, anyway? Seven foot. Oh, if I only had your confidence, Dickie. Yours and Regina's. Anyway, this time I'm going ahead slowly and very carefully. That's the scientific way to do it, Johnny. Uh, where will you try this one out? Logan's Ranch again? Well, I sort of figured the roof of the uh, administration building right here at the college. Do you think Father Kenton would object? Well, it's likely to cause some bit of excitement among the student body, isn't it? Very likely, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, just leave it to me. We'll pick a day when the good father's in town and tell him all about it afterwards. Scientifically. Yes, sir, Johnny, scientifically. Give the plane to me, Johnny. Give it to me. This time I'll launch oh, her. Oh, easy now, Dickie. This isn't any three-foot model. I've got her. I've got her. Yeah. Hey, you boys down there, watch this. Ball flies again. <laughs> Look at her go, Johnny. Look at her. All right, boys. Hurry now. Bring her back up here. And remember, the dihedral plus the camber subtracted from the designs of the wings gives the dimensions of the top surface, which is why... Say that again, Dickie. Father Kitten, I, uh, I thought you were in town. Oh, dear. In town and miss all this? I should say not. Then you're not angry how using the we roof? We brought you here, Johnny, to write Santa Clara in the sky. Thank you, Father. Well, Dickie, interesting way to teach physics, is it? Well, it's the best a man can do without a textbook on the subject. Here you are, Johnny. Gosh, it flew like a... Oh, Father Kenton, excuse me, sir. It's all right, Logan. Here, I'll take that airplane. Yes, sir. Now, Dickie, I'll show you how to really launch a model airplane. John? It's an honor, Father. Hey, watch it down there. This one, boys, is on the house. There. <laughs> well, John, how was that? Perfect, Father. Big apple <laughs> polisher. I had it all warmed up for that flight. Uh, is that so? Still, I must admit you did... Johnny. Johnny, what's the matter? I don't know. I'm, I'm dizzy. Sort of... Sort of dizzy. He's falling. Dickie, grab him. Johnny! <laughs> these attacks before today? Well, a few, Doctor. Nothing, nothing serious, though. Well? I'm not too sure what it is, Mr. Montgomery. A number of things could cause these sudden dizzy spells. It could be a slight cerebral thrombosis. What? But I don't think so. It seems more like what we call Meniere's disease, an affliction of the middle ear. Well, then there's nothing much to worry about, huh? Not if you stay on the ground. Ground? Yes. You may not have another attack for months, but there's no guarantee. And it'd be bad if it happened up there. I see what you mean. Thanks very much. Well, Regina, come in. Been visiting Johnny, have you? Yes, Father. Tommy said you wanted to see me. Alone, Regina. That's why I asked you to come to my office here. It's about Johnny. He hasn't been well lately. Yes. Yes, I know. Uh, he's been working too hard on the new plane. But 
Oh, it's so beautiful, Father. And just think, no more models. This one, he'll fly himself. I don't think so, Regina. Johnny has where to go. I spoke to the doctor. Dizzy spells that come and go when you least expect them. Johnny must never fly again. Oh, no. We both know what that means to him. Flying is his only love, his great passion. Yes, Father. Flying is his only love. Uh, well, I, I mean, flying is, well... Oh, I know what you mean, but what can we do about it? I was in hopes you might have an idea. You ladies are never without a word. I, I mean, you ladies are generally very resourceful. <laughs> and I, I mustn't let the ladies down, must I? Well, I, I may have an idea at that. There's a carnival tomorrow at Idora Park. Carnival? What's a carnival to do with Johnny's not flying? Well, I'll know more about that tomorrow, Father. After I've been there. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, the great LaSalle in a suicide jump in the space. Now concentrate your attention on that balloon up there. Believe it or not, my friends, the great LaSalle is going to leap from that balloon supported only by his parachute. Oh, look at him up there. He's waving a handkerchief. Yes, madam, the great LaSalle has signaled that he's ready. And there we go. The most daring display of acrobatics ever performed Where, uh, in the Where, where could I see Mr. LaSalle, please? Why, right up there, young lady. The most breathtaking... I mean, uh, I mean, after he lands. It's, it's very important. Well, since it's very important, that's his dressing room, lady, next to the bandstand there. Oh, thank you very much. Well, come in, young lady, come in. Mr. LaSalle. That's right. You uh, saw me jump, eh? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Not bad, huh? Mm, not good. Uh... What did you say? I said, not good. You mean to tell me you didn't get a thrill out of that? Uh-uh. Well, there must be something wrong with you. Oh, there is. I've seen a man fly. Uh, you've seen a man do what? Fly. And what did this wonder man use for wings, his own? An aeroplane. Uh, it was an air what? An aeroplane, a machine that flies. Now, if you could fly the way he does, you could take the aeroplane aloft with your balloon and get way, way up and cut it loose and fly down like a graceful bird instead of falling down like an awkward-looking bag of sand. Uh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sit down and tell me all that over again. All right, I will. I said if you could fly the way he does, you could take the airplane off. And so I brought him here to see you, Johnny. Mr. Montgomery, Professor LaSalle. You better call me Mahoney. That's my real name, Dan Mahoney. LaSalle's just my professional nom de plume. Parachute aerial artiste. In other words, balloon jumper. Oh, and he's very good too, Johnny. You should have seen him at the park yesterday. Oh, only 2,000 feet. You know, just to keep the crowd satisfied. Mm, it uh, didn't seem that high to me, of course. I... Well, just between us, <clears throat> 1,200. 1,200 feet? Hey, that's really getting up there, 1,200 feet. Oh, say, is that it? Is that the airplane you were telling me about? That's it. Say, I think I've got it. What? Why, if I could take your airplane off with a balloon, get way up there, then cut loose, why, I could fly down like a graceful bird. Why, Mr. Mahoney, that's a brilliant idea. You'd do that? Why not? Hey, you could really test my plane that way, couldn't you? You'd have all the space in the world to fly around in. No trees or hills or... or... Well, if you did hit an air current, you could... Say... Say, I was figuring on taking this airplane down to the Logan Ranch during Christmas holidays. And I know you'd be welcome to come along, Mr. Mahoney, could you? I, I mean, would you come and bring your balloon? Oh, my balloon. Oh, yes, it'd be a wonderful place to test out your idea. My balloon. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I lost my balloon last night. Poker. Tried to fill an inside straight. Oh, I see. Well, how about coming anyway and learning how to fly one of these things with, without a balloon? I'm a cinch. Good. Balloon. If there was only some way to get money to buy a balloon. We'll get it, Johnny. Don't worry. We'll get it. Johnny. I don't know whether to congratulate you or blacken both your eyes. Dickie, come in. Come in. What kind of a vacation did you have? Never hmm? mind that. 
Regina tells me you were flying the day after Christmas at Logan's Ranch. Oh, a little dicky. Didn't get very high, though, but the new plane behaved beautifully. Besides, I got a new pupil. Name of, uh, of Mahoney. Are you out of your head? What did the doctor tell you? Oh, but I feel fine. There's nothing wrong with me. No? Well, then give me a hand with these sacks. Sacks? Hey, what are you trying to reduce? I come in here to ask a favor and I get insulted. <laughs> what is it, Dicky? Well, that gold machine you invented. You know, to separate gold from sand. Uh -huh. That thing over there in the corner. Yeah, well, well, what about it? Well, I was up in Placerville over Christmas and I found some sand that looked good. So I lugged these two sacks back with me. Yeah, but if you haven't got time to bother, it's all right oh, with wait me. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, no, no. I, I don't want to be in the way. Ju Just run the sand through the machine when you have the time. L look, look. I got plenty of time. Come on, let's see what you got there. Uh, well, Johnny? Uh, well? Uh, Dickie. You think I've got something? Uh, that bright, shiny stuff down there in the hopper? Yes, it's, um, it's gold. It is? Mm-hmm. Look at me. Did you salt this sand? Why, the very idea. Just my luck. I take the vow of poverty as a priest, and what happens? I find gold. Oh, by the way, your airplane... I said, did you salt this sand? Your airplane. Father Ketton and I, we had an idea. We figured if you had a balloon, someone could take the plane up in the air, cut it loose, and fly it down like a graceful bird. I haven't any money for a balloon. Oh, but you have. Now that we know this pretty pile of sand is gold. And Father Kenton thinks the flight should be made at Santa Clara. Here? Of course. He wants you to have our moral support. But, Dickie, I... Oh, forget it, Johnny. You see, we just like to have you around. Well, Dan, good luck. I won't fall down this time like an awkward-looking bag of sand. Now, just remember, I can build a new airplane, but I can't duplicate Dan Mahoney. Balloons all ready, Mr. Mahoney. And, and don't forget, a thousand feet is high enough. You'll hear it when I fire this pistol here. Now, that's your signal to cut loose. You understand that? It's a cinch, Professor. Goodbye, Regina. Good luck, Dan. I only wish I were going to be with you, Danny. Thanks, Professor, and don't be nervous now. Oh! Well, Regina, the only way down now is to fly down. He will, Johnny. You'll fly down in your airplane. How high is the balloon, Father? How high? A good thousand feet, Johnny. Can you see Dan through those binoculars? Perfectly. Well, here goes. Oh. All right, well, what's the matter with him? Johnny, he's holding his fingers to his ears. He's laughing. Dan, cut loose. Dan, cut loose. Oh, I know he can't hear me, but... Now he's pointing his finger upwards. He wants to go higher. Well, if he doesn't break his neck, I ought to. He's cutting loose now, John. There he goes. Regina, look. Look, he's flying. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, I'm so proud I could cry. Like a bird. Like a graceful bird. That's it, boy. That's it. With indelible ink. California man invents flying machine. Santa Clara, scene of successful control flight by air machine. Alexander Graham Bell issues statement. All subsequent attempts in aviation must begin with John Montgomery's machine. Mahoney to make exhibition flights at country fairs. Scientists ridicule Montgomery airplane. Airplane called cheap circus trick to make money. Dan Mahoney killed as Montgomery airplane crashes. Johnny? Sure, sure. Come in. Father Kenton and I, we just walked over to to see how our boy was doing. Well, that's very kind of you, Father. John, I know how you feel. It's unfortunate, but these things happen every day. It's nobody's fault. This one's mine. How, John? For allowing poor Dan to talk me into doing those, those crazy stunts. He thought I needed money. Well, I, I did, but science and exhibitionism, hey, oh, they just don't mix. You may be right, John, but ever since the world began, progress has demanded sacrifice. Yes, yes, Father, I I know. And I won't give up. I just I just can't give up. I can't. Father Ball! Richie! 
Katrina. Oh, but it's good to be back again. Father Kenton's waiting for you in the carriage. Oh, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Leaving Santa Clara for two whole years. But I'm back now. Back for good, I hope. Uh, Regina, is Johnny with you? Well, he isn't here for one reason. His new airplane. It's just about finished, Father. He wanted it all ready when you came home, so be surprised. How is he? He's fine, Father. And you should see the plane. It's so much better than he ever dreamed. It's just beautiful, Father. Beautiful. But then what are we standing here for? Take me to it. Take me to it. Well, Dickie, what's the verdict? Johnny, it's just like Regina said. Beautiful. That's all I can say. Beautiful. <laughs> Come on, now. You gotta get some sleep. Oh, my, look at the time. I'll tell you all about it in the morning. Sure, Johnny, we can talk about... What's that? I, I don't know. Wait a minute. The walls! They're shaking! Earthquake! Get out of here, Dickie! Run! The students, we've got to wake them up! Earthquake! Earthquake! Just a moment, we'll bring you the third act of Gallant Journey, starring Glenn Ford and Janet Blair. If you're a housewife doing the family marketing these days, we think you'll sympathize with Mrs. Brown. No soap again today? My goodness, this is the second time this week, Mr. Johnson. But on the other hand, Mr. Johnson deserves your sympathy, too. We'll let him tell you why. Well, the plain fact is, I just can't get enough soap to sell. There's a shortage and a bad one. But why is there a shortage now, so long after the war's end? Well, one reason, ma'am, is that fats and oils needed to make soap are still very scarce. This country used to import 30% of the soap-making oils from the Philippines, Sumatra, Java, and other countries. Now we get only about a fifth of that. You see, refineries destroyed in the war haven't all been rebuilt yet. And there's a great lack of shipping space, too. Yes, but does that account altogether for the shortage of soap? No, no, not altogether. Even though the supply is down, the demand is way up. There are 10 million more civilians now than a year ago, and 2 million of them are but new babies. They all want a lot of soap. And even though the manufacturers are making every bit they can, the materials available, and distribution is fair to us dealers, there still isn't enough. Well, I guess I'll just have to be more patient about the soap situation. Well, that would make it lots easier for us grocers, Miss Brown. And remember, we're doing our very best to get as much soap as we can to sell you as fast as we can. But there's still another way you can help us, too. And what's that, Mr. Johnson? If you're not saving every bit of used kitchen fats, please begin saving right away. If you and all my other customers would do that, it would sure help a lot. And don't forget, your grocer is a real friend. He's working hard to get you all the things you want. So be patient if he doesn't have everything you ask for every time you shop. Drop in and see him often. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act three of Gallant Journey, starring Glenn Ford as John Montgomery and Janet Blair as Regina. <laughs> John Montgomery survived the disastrous earthquake that struck Santa Clara and destroyed San Francisco, but the airplane on which he had pinned all his hopes was completely wrecked. Now, dazed with despair, he stands among the ruins of the college workshop. It's been awful, John. Awful. They say over 400 were killed in San Francisco alone. Well, uh, what I came to ask you... But... Johnny, there it is. What? What? Look, your gold machine. Can you beat that? The only thing in here that isn't completely ruined. That ought to mean something. This remains out of everything else. Come on, Johnny, give me a hand. What do you want with a gold separator? I want to take it out into the cruel world where it can be seen. Seen by whom? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Father Kenton has met a man. A man with a great deal of foresight and a fat purse. Now, don't get excited, Johnny. But I think, I think maybe we've sold your gold machine. Regina, Regina. Johnny, what is it? I've sold it, my, my gold machine. Look, look at this check. <gasps> $25,000. That's oh. all the money in the world, Regina. Oh, Johnny. Hey, you're hugging me. <laughs> Am I? Oh, I, I've wanted to for so many years. All, all this money, I... Now I, I can ask you, Regina, please... Will you marry me? 
Oh, of course, silly. Of course. Oh, Regina, what a sap I've been. And we spent our entire honeymoon at Del Monte, Father, the most expensive hotel. Oh, and my goodness, you should have seen John. We dressed for dinner every night, and every night after dinner, we danced. John danced. That I'd have to see to believe. <laughs> well, ask him. I would if I could find him. He's not here? He said something about having to go into town. That's right, Dickie, into town to pick up a wedding present. Hello, darling. You want to see it? Just a piece of paper, see? John, but what is it? A court order. Somebody thinks I stole my idea for the gold reclaiming machine. They've filed suit. They're taking it to court. I knew you'd beat them, John. I, I knew you'd win the case. Oh, Regina, you don't seem to understand. Don't understand? But... Darling, haven't I been with you in court every day, week after week? Why, you don't even seem to care that you've won. Well, it costs money to go to court. Sure, sure, we beat them. But I'm, I'm broke again, as usual. Except this time. Yes. I'm married, Regina. And I never cared about what happened when I, I was alone, failure after failure. But don't you see what I've done to you? I don't care about anything either, John. I've got you, haven't I? What are we going to do? Well, you know, Professor, everything happens for the best. All I know is that everything happens to me. Well, you see, your gold separator took gold from sand, and it also took you from flying. Well, we've had our little journey into the unknown, and it's been fun. But let's get our feet off the ground again and get up there in the clouds where we feel more at home. Build another plane? Yes, I I spoke to Father Kenton. The workshops have been rebuilt, and they want you back. Are we going, John? Sure, Regina. We're going. This time I've got ideas, Dickie, a lot of ideas. Throughout the country, there must be other men talking about flying, wanting to fly. So I thought that if I could start a sort of school, a flying school... Wonderful, Johnny, wonderful. You see, I'll need their help, other men. You never needed help before. No, no. Every plane I built before was borne aloft by, by air currents. They, they glided. Now it's time for a different kind of airplane. A kind that won't have to depend on air currents. That will, that will push itself across the sky. An airplane with an engine? Yes, Dickie. An airplane with an engine. Glory be. I idea. I oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. I, wait, wait, wait. No, just... <laughs> I, I don't understand this at all. Who are you men? Who sent you here? Well, well I got a lady. Hey, 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 I would hey, like to hey, work hey, with Johnny. Johnny well, no, 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 no. Wait, one at a time. Eh? Johnny, I guess I sent them. We sent them. Well? My name's Raymond Walker, Professor. By night, I'm a motion picture operator, but by day, I'm a flyer. At least, I like to say I am. And, and you? My name is Tony Dundaro. I grow grapes, Professor. I make wine. But up here, in the head, I fly. Tony Dondero, eh? And you? I'm Cornelius Rheinlander. I run a cable car in San Francisco, sir, because I like to climb the hills and look all over. But I want to go higher and look all over. Well, well, gentlemen, if that's the way you feel about it, I... I guess we'll build an airplane. We will. We will, she says. Did, did you say something, Father? Did you say something, Father? Who, me? No. It's hard to describe Evergreen Valley in a letter, Father. The most beautiful place I've ever seen. Johnny and I live in one tent, and Walker, Rylander, and Dondero in the other. They've tested the plane every day, and tomorrow, if all goes well, they'll install the engine. Oh, and I'm so glad to say that Johnny's promised he won't fly it himself. You know what the doctors say. Look for the mailman Thursday, Father. He'll have big news for you. Right now, Johnny and I are going to climb a mountain. Well, well, was it worth the walk, Regina? 
Oh, look at the valley down there. Oh, we're on top of the world, John. Is this how it is in an airplane? Oh, even better, honey. Wait till tomorrow when that engine's installed. I'll tell you all about it. You'll tell me? Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to fly it, John, but you promised... And miss the first chance to get up there? Oh, now, don't you go worrying, honey. I haven't had one of those dizzy spells in years. The doctor just got his wires crossed. Hey, look. I'm steady as an old mountain goat. Johnny! Oh, get back from the edge, Johnny! Oh, Regina. <laughs> oh, Johnny, darling. I had no idea you were so worried about... You won't, Johnny. Promise me you won't fly. All right. All right, then. You and I will just roost on the ground like a couple of eagles, hmm? <laughs> but someday, honey, I'm going to take you up there, right up in those beautiful clouds... And I'll show you all the things that I've always dreamed about. We'll fly down deep canyons between tall, tall cliffs. You see, like that one over there. Fly past great cathedrals with tall spires and listen to the music of the organ and the voices of the choir. And then we'll fly over and look at the beautiful old castle behind those clouds. And all around, there'll be, there'll be little clouds like children laughing while they play. And we'll... We'll wave to them as we fly by. They've called me crazy for dreaming such things. But up there, I'll be king. Oh, darling, still tears in your eyes. Nothing ever gets in my eyes, John, but you. That engine, Professor. Running like, like nobody's business. It's perfect, perfect. Ship's ready, Professor, whenever you are. John! Here, Regina. You're taking it up after all you've promised. I've got to go, Regina. Why? Why do you have to? Oh, of course you have to. Well, it's, it's just that I've been so selfish, John. I didn't want to share you with anything. Not even the sky. The wheels are clear, Professor. Good luck. Good luck, John. Thanks, Regina. This is the most beautiful flight of all. Higher and higher and higher. Just look at him, Mrs. Montgomery. What a plane. He, he's turning. What a flyer. Look at him bank. Just watch that. Something's wrong. <gasps> John! Oh, he's coming down. The motor has not stopped. You can hear he's our He's landing. I, I don't understand that. What happened? Come on, fellas. It must be him. Mr. Montgomery, hurry! Yeah. wasn't exactly a perfect landing, Regina, but I, I brought it down. John, what happened? What's wrong? It's the same old trouble got kind of dizzy for a minute. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm all right now. I'm you're right. getting into that tent and you're going to lie down. Yeah, yeah, you rest, Professor. We'll fix the machine as good as new. Well, do a good job, fellas. It looks like you're going to have to do the flying from now on. Hey, Jenny, don't look so serious. Lie down and rest, John. Please, just for a little while. All right, sure, sure. Uh, uh, how, how's this, eh? Here, let me fix the pillow. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe a little rest would make me feel better. I, I don't know why I should feel so sleepy. Oh, you think you're just like that machine that you can go on and on without stopping. <laughs> you think you know me pretty well, don't you? Yes, John. And I called you a cuckoo once, remember? When you were building your first airplane, I thanked you, and I still do. My first airplane. Hmm. Pull the tent flap back, Regina. There, that's, that's fine. Look at them pile up out there, all the clouds, all the castles and the canyons and cathedrals and the little little children playing. You remember that verse for no man travels? Travels twice. The great highway that climbs through darkness into light, through night to day. The great highway. And they said I was crazy to try to fly it. <laughs> but up there, I'll be king. 
up there uh, watching. John! Johnny! He just went to sleep. He asked me to pull back the flaps so he could see the clouds. And then he looked up and said, up there, I'll be king. Every journey must have an end. But there's an epilogue to our play tonight, and here it is. Glenn Ford and Janet Blair appearing strictly as themselves. Glenn, I understand that during the filming of Gallant Journey, you were elected top man of the year by the Bobby Soxers of America. Well, <clears throat> I don't know how those things happen, Mr. Keeley, but I'm certainly grateful. Well, tell me, Glenn, how does it feel to follow people like Sinatra and Van Johnson? Well, um, everyone else follows them, so I guess I'm right in line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure those many fans of yours are looking forward to your next Columbia picture, Frame. <laughs> that must be the first Frame motion picture in history. Oh, Mr. Keeley's speaking of the title, Janet, not the thing that goes around it. Oh. Uh, tell me, Janet, is it true you took your last name from a county in my native state? That's right, Mr. Keeley. From Blair County, Pennsylvania, where I was born. And you took your name from the geography book, too, didn't you, Glenn? Yes, sir. From the town of Glenford, where my father was born. I just split the name up, and there I was. My first real name is Gwellen. Gwellen? Yeah. <laughs> oh. G W Y L L Y N. Yes. Not many people know about that. <laughs> Well, 30 million people know it now, Glenn. <laughs> well, how about you, Mr. Keeley? Are you on the map? Yes, Janet, I certainly am. My people came from an English town of Keithley, spelt the same way as I spell my name, K-E-I-G-H-L-E-Y. Well, Mr. Keeley, as one town to another, I'd say we have a mighty pretty county next to us, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'd like to assure those people back in Pennsylvania that Janet has kept all her natural loveliness and bloom. Well, thank you, Mr. Keeley. And you can tell them, too, what a wonderful beauty aid Lux Toilet Soap can be. I've used it faithfully for years for my complexion. And the result is very easy on the eyes. What are you presenting in this theater next week, Mr. Keeley? Next Monday night, we're answering literally hundreds of requests by bringing to this stage a great favorite of ours and of our listeners, Alan Ladd. <laughs> Alan appears, co-starred with Veronica Lake in Paramount's thrilling screenplay, OSS. Here's action, drama, and romance in this behind-the-line spy story of our Office of Strategic Services, that heroic group which did so much to pave the way for victory in Europe. That's something your audience should go for in a big way, Mr. Keeley. Good night. Good night. Good night, Glenn Ford and Janet Blair. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake in OSS. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear OSS with Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake. Spry. When you bake and fry Spry. for your cake and pie, Spry. get your shortening by. We like on spry. Yes, it's pure all vegetable spry for tender, flaky pastry, lighter, richer flavored cakes, and crisp, golden, digestible fried foods. Rely on Spry. S-P-R-Y. Rely on Spry. S-P-R-Y. 
Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of OSS with Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake.